everybody, welcome back to Hard for Games. I'm Tony. Today I wanted to talk about a game called Towers 2 Plight of the Stargazer. Now, it's for the Atari Jaguar, and it's a port. It's a port of the same game from the Atari Falcon, uh, which apparently is a computer system. I'd never heard of it before. But it is the only RPG, apparently, allegedly, the only RPG for the Atari Jaguar, which they very proudly proclaim on the back of the box. Partially because it's the only RPG for the Jaguar, and it's a game for the Jaguar. It's kind of getting up there in price. A complete copy will run you about $300 on eBay. My box is a little bit jacked up, but the cartridge is good. Uh, so it's not quite that amount, but it's still kind of getting up there in price. So let's go ahead and get started, because I figured this is a game you guys probably haven't really played or experienced before, so it might be fun to talk about it. Jumping right into the story, it's pretty simple and it's given to you up front for the most part. There is a mad astronomer called Dagon, and he has a tower that he works out of and he has basically retreated from society to perform strange experiments. All of the knights of the land have gone into the tower to try to stop him and bring him back to society, but they've all gone missing. So it is your job to go in and take care of business. Now there are bits and pieces of story here and there scattered throughout the game, uh, but they're not really told in like a narrative sense. They're mostly in scrolls that you would pick up off the ground and read, or if you talk to some of the NPC enemies, some of them you can, you know, you can communicate with before they stab you. But it's fair to say that this isn't really like a narrative driven RPG. More on that in a second. Let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. You start with the game by picking your avatar. Of course, all the avatars have different stats, and then you get started. This is a first-person perspective D&D-style dungeon crawler. Think Wolfenstein, but an RPG with 10 times more massive levels, but one quarter of the draw distance. You start with basically nothing. Everything that you have, you need to find first. Your spells, your weapons, armor, storage, everything. It's actually really rewarding as you fill up your inventory and strategize which weapons and magic to equip. Now that said, there are no stats for these weapons. You have stats, but the weapons don't. So oftentimes you will find a new weapon or kill an enemy and take their weapon. And you kind of have to guess as to whether it's stronger or better than the weapon that you currently have. And that's kind of the name of the game here. It really sets the mood that the game isn't there to help you at all. There is no guidance in this game. Now, of course, with this equipment, you go around and you fight enemies. At first, these guys are assholes because you have nothing equipped except for your fist. But as you become more and more of a powerhouse, the average enemies don't really bother you so much. Also, the enemy AI is either ferocious or horribly, horribly dumb. I've noticed the best way to attack is to get their attention and kind of backtrack. There's a weird battle system in this game in that you have to hit directly to the middle of the screen. And if the enemy isn't lined up directly in the middle, you're going to have all these misses. For some reason, backtracking as they're coming toward you tends to line things up properly. I don't know why. Otherwise, it can be kind of frustrating to get your licks in. Especially since the controls are... They're a touch slippery. The D-pad kind of pushes you along in each respective direction a little bit further than you would expect every time. I also like how your first weapon is a broom because you have to murder all of the janitors on the first level to get their keys. A few other notes, you can restore your health at any time, which is really nice by pressing the three button on Atari Jaguar's weird numerical keypad controller thing. But a few caveats here. You can't fall asleep near enemies because they'll wake you up, obviously. So you need to find a safe space. You can't go to sleep if you're hungry, so you need to make sure that you have lots of food stocked. You can also cast spells for food, which is kind of nice. Also keep in mind that just uh, as you can be interrupted with your sleep by enemies, as you equip 
different things and select spells, you can be attacked. Your menu screen, unfortunately, is not a pause screen. Now, aside from equipping and fighting, each level of this game is a puzzle. And I do literally mean levels because it's in a tower and you're going up and up and up and up. Now, sometimes this means you realize that you can like interact with something like uh, a chain. Sometimes it's deciding which chains to pull and which order to open something up. Other times, it means finding a hidden passage, which really sucks in this game. The issue with Towers 2 is that it's a labyrinth. Even each floor is a labyrinth. And there isn't enough to distinguish each area to keep you from getting confused. Now there is a map which you kind of draw out by exploring areas, but your avatar on the map is a dot, not an arrow. So often you'll enter the map, get a point of reference, move, and then re-enter the map to figure out which way you were actually facing to begin with. Did your little guy, little dot, end up moving north, south, east, west when you moved? Because otherwise you really kind of don't know. Um, you do have a little compass in the corner, but ultimately I also found that not to be particularly helpful in navigating. In a place like this, for example, the secret passage is at the end of a hallway. It's kind of obvious that there's nowhere else to go. Also notice the little white speck indicating it's a secret passage that you couldn't really possibly see from far away. However, in larger areas, A, you don't necessarily know what you're looking for, like you, you don't necessarily know you're looking for a secret passage to continue. B, in larger areas, you may not know where the hell you are. And C, you have to get so close to these walls to actually see if there's a secret passage that you are very susceptible to enemies and enemy fire when you do this. Now keep in mind that this isn't like Wolfenstein where a secret passage means extra ammo or more weapons or treasure or something like that. These are a hard requirement for moving forward in the game. Granted, it's not just all chains and finding secret passages. A lot of it is kind of finding your items and using them strategically to continue. But even that can be confusing because you have very limited storage and there are some items that you cannot throw away. But of course the game gives you no hint as to which items you need to throw away. So for example, if, if you do throw something away and you shouldn't have, you will have to backtrack through this labyrinth so many hours to find it again and then go back to where you needed it. Uh, so for example, I didn't really know whether or not I needed feces, so I picked up literal shit in this game and kept it in my backpack for two or three levels before I just got rid of it. Now let's talk a little bit about the graphics and the presentation. I do like the presentation overall. It's dim, it's dark, it's dank. Uh, the music, which is amazing that it actually has music. A lot of Atari Jaguar games do not have music. Think of Doom, for example. Kind of creates this sort of spooky, medieval, horror sort of atmosphere, which I do really like. They did do a good job of making a giant play world with tons of atmosphere. However, I do think that although it's big, the biggest problem is that there's not enough differentiation. The levels change just so very slowly. It's not like, you know, other first person games where you move to a new level and everything's different. It's refreshing, right? This is not the case. And it adds to the confusion as to, you know, wondering where you are constantly because it's so hard to tell and the levels are not different in any way. Well, different in minor ways, I should say. I think that if, for example, they couldn't include different textures because of storage limitations on the cart, they should have just halved the size of the game and added in more differentiation for a richer experience. Now, that being said, it, it does look good for a Jaguar game and it runs very smoothly. And like I said before, it does have music. So those are all big pluses. So I did ultimately enjoy my time with this game, but I do think that the genre really isn't for me. I'm a big RPG fan, but not really the dungeon crawler type, nor the first person, nor the D&D style. So there was just kind of a, an RPG disconnect between me and this game. Uh, I do think that, you know, there are people out there that would enjoy this type of game a lot more than me. So I, I can't really fault it for being a game in a genre that I don't really dive into often or at all. I, I do think that there's an audience for this game. I think that some people who enjoy those genres would really like to dig into this game. But even still, like I mentioned, I think that there are a lot of design flaws that cause it to not be a very, or as rich of an experience. So overall, I'd give this game like a seven and a half out of 10. Give it a try if you want to. 
Now that said, thank you very much for subscribing. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Thank you for clicking that notification button, that little bell that tells you when our videos are coming up, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.